time. Uh, you're going to be real familiar with each other. Uh, they are well coached by Coach Fowler. Physical, big guards, two all-conference post players. And there wasn't going to be a whole lot of secrets about what, what we did or what they did. And we tried to change a few things up, but, but you try to do too much and you kind of lose what, what you did best during the season. But we figured it would be a, a low-scoring physical game, and, and that it was. Let's talk about the first half defense you all played. They didn't cross 20 points until about 14 minutes to go in regulation. Also, 14 turnovers caused by the defense. Let's talk about the adjustments you made from those first two games to kind of help the defense out in today's game. X's nose a little bit. We try to play a little more in the gaps from the guards, <clears throat> a little more getting technical midline defense from the weak side and, and really help out. Uh, but I give our young ladies all the credit. You can talk that up, but until you have to guard 6'2 in a fast 5'10 post player who can really use their bodies well, uh, you can draw that up all you want. But we gave great effort in the first half, and they executed that. Once again, Seneca, Walton, Rebecca Rux, uh, Randy Ball underneath, and then all of our guards did a good job putting some pressure on the basketball when it was delivered inside and, and some good weak side help. We got some hands on the ball when they, when they tried to throw it high-low. So I kind of went through a cold spell offensively in the second half. Just talk about keeping aggressive, and you ended up going to the line for an and one, and getting the offense back on track in the second half. Well, every good team make a run. They made their run. We just had to keep our composure. And I feel like after we got our jitters out, even though it was second half, we were able to connect and just take the ball inside because shots weren't falling, and we just had to put the pressure on their defense. Couldn't be more proud of the team. Um, Alabama Huntsville made a great run in the conference tournament, um, conference champions last week. Uh, beat a very good Tuskegee team yesterday, playing at a high level, a lot of confidence up on us at half. And uh, I just told our radio crew, I wish I could uh, take any type of credit for, for halftime, but it was these young ladies. I just told them to stay confident. Those shots would fall. We were getting good shots in the first half. Uh, I liked our defense for the most part. Uh, one or two possible adjustments if they came out in a zone for what we were going to do. They didn't play a whole lot of that in the first half. Uh, but this, uh, this player to my right, KK Chaney, she has been such a hustler all year and such a tough defensive player. Uh, and every day in practice when we see her shoot that shot, she knocks it down. And, and I think I got on her once or twice in, in the first half and said, you step in without any hesitation and knock it down. And she not only did that, but she got, got a few offensive rebounds at the beginning of the second half when they went to the zone. And uh, she, she scored 14 big points for us, I think, all in the second half. Uh, and uh, Chad over here on the left, 16 points. Uh, she's really stepped it up the last few weeks. So uh, these two young ladies are deserving to be, to be sitting here right now. Chad, is the, uh, Randy and Barr kind of picked up a couple of quick fouls in the first half, and kind of you and Jaquisha had to play a little more minutes. Talk about I mean, stepping your game up in that first half to make sure the team kept going offensively. I just had to come out and be confident with my shot, bring a lot of effort to the team, and just 
play play like we normally play. Give a lot of effort and do what I do. Let the game come to me. There's the credit for that second half. What did you say amongst each other in the locker room to kind of pick each other up after Huntsville kind of went to the locker room with the momentum at halftime? Um, just uh, take the ball to the goal strong, you know, be confident in what we do. You know, just go out there and play hard. Be, have intensity out there on defense. Graduation, finding the right fit for college, just a couple of things high school seniors look forward to while getting ready to be on their own. Well, look no further. Delta State University Housing and Residence Life wants to answer any concerns you may have when trying to find the right place to call your new home. Whether it's finding the right roommate or the right residence hall, let the friendly and knowledgeable staff in the Delta State Housing and Residence Life office answer your questions. Phone them at 662-846-4151 or by following Housing and Residence Life in the quick links at www.deltastate.edu. Delta State University. Join it stand out. Abraham's an historic downtown Cleveland has clothed the Delta since 1979. Shirts, sweaters, and khakis by Southern Tide and Polo. Costa sunglasses, mountain khakis, and jeans by Big Star and Silver. Abraham's has the large assortment of the North Face and Patagonia outerwear for men, women, and children. Tom shoes for men and women. Cole Hahn and Clark shoes plus the finest tie collection in Mississippi. Team up with dress shirts by Polo, Enroe, and Ike Behar. A large inventory of fine suits and sport coats by Austin Reed, S. Cohen, and Abraham's own private label. Abraham's an historic downtown. Downtown Cleveland. Head coach Mike Kennison and coach, close game tonight, guys able to come on on top. Just your thoughts on how your boys play tonight? Well, we weren't real sharp in, in some areas, but we were pretty good on the mound. We combined three pitchers on the mound to get the job done, and particularly to close out by Garrett Pickens. He comes in in a tough situation in the seventh, bails us out of it, and uh, then quiets your bats down for the last two innings. So, you know, in a situation where we'd had two midweek games and we're running a little thin on arms, we had to stretch him out a little bit and he responded and difference in the game for us tonight. 
and saw uh, Cole Mitchell a little bit, got the starts, and I know he hasn't had the season he's wanted so far, but good outing tonight. What's that? How do you think he did in that goes for his confidence? Yeah, we knew he'd be on a pitch count, three or four innings. we got to have him this weekend, as we do all the guys who threw tonight. But, uh, you know, he's been uh, working back in and starting to throw better, and I thought, uh, you know, there was some improvement there tonight. I was pleased with his performance. Going into the weekend, you got a tough, uh, very talented Huntsville team waiting for you. So how about plans going in for the weekend? Well, we know what's ahead there. They're very competitive. They play really hard. They're very talented. We played them seven times last year. and Both teams know each other well. We'll have our hands full. Uh, we got to pick it up with the bats. We got to, you know, right now we're going through a little bit of a dead period with the bats. We're not swinging them real well, hitting too many routine balls in the air. But we'll go back to work on that, and hopefully, uh, you know, that'll turn around for us maybe uh, this weekend. And one of the guys that has been swinging the bat for you all season long, Tyler Aldridge, increased his hitting streak to 26 tonight. Talk about his bat so far and coming up on a record here. Yeah, well, he's been a very consistent performer for us. He plays the game the right way. He plays you know, he's a very hard nose and competes every at bat. I think that's the key to his success. He doesn't give an bat away. And, he goes up there and makes the pitcher earn what everything every time up. And, uh, you know, he also responds well in the clutch. He handles pressure well and uh, has been a great part of our offense this year, no question. Coach, congratulations on the victory night and good luck this yeah. weekend in Huntsville. Thank you. Now joined by senior pitcher Garrett Pickens. And Garrett, three innings on the mound tonight, struck out the side to end the game. Let's talk about how you felt on the mound tonight and how your team played. Felt pretty good in the most part. And third inning, I had to, had to pull a little extra, though. I'm getting pretty tired. And after kind of what happened early in the season against Harding, how big is it for you guys and how amped you guys come try to get a game back? It's real big. I mean, it's a big confidence booster to come back and get somebody that got us pretty good. Kind of conference this weekend against Huntsville. It's probably about you guys keep going in conference, heading towards the second real half of the season, really. Uh, it's a very big game, very big weekend. We got, hopefully we can come out and get three. Yeah, thanks for your time. Thank you. Now joined by State's midfielder Tyler Aldridge. Tyler, up to your hitting streak to 26 games tonight. Let's talk about how you've been seeing the ball at the plate so far. What's been working for you? Uh, I've been uh, seeing it good, uh, just uh, working the counts, you know, and getting on top of the ball and just uh, feeling the swing. Let's talk about your team. And how big was this game for you to try to get a game back at Harding after kind of early in the season? Uh, it was big. Uh, we uh, traveled to Harden and uh, we they put that loss on us, and it kind of – Left a terrible taste in our mouth when we left, and so this game, I mean, we uh, we pretty much, you know, we, uh, we we came out and grinded, and I mean, we took it like it was our last game. Kind of hunts for this weekend. Talk about the team's mentality going into the weekend against the Chargers, and also for yourself with a chance to, you know, keep that hitting streak going. Uh, I'm not gonna think about <laughs> that. Uh, I'm just gonna go up there and focus on the task at hand, and I think our whole teammates, you know, we know what's up. This weekend, and it's a big, it's a big conference, you know, game series. Uh, we played them uh, last year in the GSC Championship, and you know, and also regionals. So it's gonna, it's gonna be a good game, and it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a hard fought match. Right, thank you for your time. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. As an economist, I meet with many business leaders who just don't understand the true cost of documents, unmanaged fleets, dysfunctional workflow. It's chaos. It's profit-killing chaos. Mississippi owned and operated, the image specialist in Southern Duplicating is Mississippi's only full-line Kyocera dealer. Kyocera's full-line copiers, printer, and faxes offer robust work solutions while offering industry-leading lowest total cost of ownership. Offering rental, leasing, and purchasing options, let the image specialist in Southern Duplicating help grow your business. Hello, I'm Lynn Posey, your Central District Public Service Commissioner. And if you're already enjoying the benefits of our no-call program, you will continue to do so without having to re-register. However, if you're not on our no-call list and are still receiving annoying telemarketing calls, please call us at 1-800-356-6430 or visit our website. We're serious about enforcing the law and protecting you from unwanted telemarketing calls. I would probably be Ash Ketchum from Pokemon because I used to play Pokemon all the time when I was little and I want to catch them all. Um, the, when you said cartoon character, the first thing that came to my mind is Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't watch cartoons. 
<laughs> um, I'd probably have to say the blue powder puff girl because my sister and I, when we were younger, we pretended that we were them and I was always the blue one because she was Bubbles and I liked blue and Bubbles and she was awesome. <laughs> no, no, you got me. I, 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 back home in Germany, I didn't watch, uh, watch that much cartoons, uh, so uh, I don't really know what cartoon, cartoon I should be or can be. Like I can't identify uh, with this question. I'm sorry. I don't know. I, as a kid, I grew up with my mom calling me Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. So he's ADD. So I guess I'd go with Tigger. Buttercup from the Powerpuff Girls because she just dominates. <laughs> be the Tasmanian Devil because he spins around a lot. Don't know. I'd pay all my rent. <laughs> um, I'd probably get another dog. That's something on my to-do list. <laughs> Wait, a <laughs> billion dollars. Like, I would, I would en enjoy my life and like get things which I ever dream, like a nice, nice car. I don't know. Like, and on the other side, I would, for sure, when I have a billion dollars, give like uh, a lot of money, my family, my friends, and uh, for sure, I would donate a lot of uh, money to poor countries for kids, for animals, whatever. Like where people need money to get alive million dollars. Well, I'd probably finish paying off college and I'd probably give some back to my parents because they've supported me my whole life and then I would just probably spend a lot of it and save some too. million dollars. Um, I'd act like a G. <laughs> I'd probably pay off my school loans first, then give some money to my parents because they put me through swimming and got me to where I am today and then I'd probably buy a horse. I'd travel with my family. A billion dollars. I'd buy a really nice house and just enjoy it. <laughs> my funniest moment with Coach Dano was, um, we, sort of, we sort of had a dancing duo thing going on. Um, I might have gone low on him without really realizing it. <laughs> The 50 fly at the end of conference was a good one, but him actually calling me Booty by my nickname that only a couple people on the team call me, and he's only called me it twice, and every time it makes me smile. That's a hard one. Mm, funniest memory would probably be last year during off season. Laura and I got really bored at practice, so the next day we decided that we were gonna switch practices because we were in different groups. And so I wore her bathing suit and her cap and goggles and she wore mine and I went to her into the pool and for about 10 minutes none of the coaches had any idea that we had switched and the only reason they knew was because Daniel really paid attention to how we were swimming and realized that I really wasn't Laura and she wasn't Heidi so we've laughed about that for a long time. It was pretty funny when he tried uh, to swim 50 yard butterfly after the girls won conference and someone pushed him in the water and he had to swim 50 yard butterfly and how the way how he swam was more than funny and I think everyone was laughing about him that he feels the same pain how we have to feel in practice. Oh man, I don't even, there's too many. Um, I guess <laughs> um, this year or every year we've had uh, quote of the meet, and when every time Daniel um, has a quote of the meet and Trevor is his quote, he just laughs the whole time and he can't even say it right and it's not really funny, <laughs> but it's funny to him and he just laughs the whole time he's telling us. So the only reason it's funny to us is because it's Daniel saying it. <laughs> Coach Daniel. Um, probably the funniest thing with Coach Daniel is every time I go get fast food at Wendy's, somehow he always ends up there at the same time I go. He always gives me crap for it because I'm not supposed to be eating fast food, but every time I go there, he sometimes always goes there at the same time. Probably my first account of meeting Coach Daniel. He came to pick myself and Rebecca up at the airport. 
and we were actually staying at a hotel and the car trip here we sat talking about how we call traffic lights robots and swim meets galas and we pretty much laughed the whole car trip which was two hours. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. The greatest thing is in sliced bread. Chocolate mess bread. Some sliced bread. Whole wheat sliced bread. The greatest um probably I don't know. The iPhone's pretty great. I like that a lot. Um malted butter. Mega stuffed Oreos. <laughs> um, I think probably it's the music. Like I couldn't imagine uh, the world without without music. Uh, like it makes great feelings inside me. It makes really, uh, it makes people happy. And as well for swimming practice, I couldn't imagine to swim without goggles. I've. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, that's a trick question. <laughs> I don't know. A five letter word, shorter when you add. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, But if you add two letters so it doesn't become shorter, it becomes longer. I don't know. I can I can't help you here. Serious. <laughs> Did you ask everyone this question? Oh. Five letter word. And shorter when you add two letters to it. I don't know, but I have a rule for you. Hmm. Is it short? Is that what it is? What um, has four eyes but never see? Mississippi. Graduation. Finding the right fit for college. Just a couple of things high school seniors look forward to while getting ready to be on their own. Well, look no further. Delta State University Housing and Residence Life wants to answer any concerns you may have when trying to find the right place to call your new home. Whether it's finding the right roommate or the right residence hall, let the friendly and knowledgeable staff in the Delta State Housing and Residence Life office answer your questions. Phone them at 662-846-4151 or by following Housing and Residence Life in the quick links at www.deltastate.edu. Delta State University. Join it. Stand out. Abraham's in a story downtown Cleveland has clothed the Delta since 1979. Shirts, sweaters, and khakis by Southern Tide and Polo. Costa sunglasses, mountain khakis, and jeans by Big Star and Silver. Abraham's has the large assortment of the North Face and Patagonia outerwear for men, women, and children. Tom shoes for men and women. Cole Hahn and Clark shoes, plus the finest tie collection in Mississippi. Team up with dress shirts by Polo, Enro, and Ike Behar. A large inventory of fine suits and sport coats by Austin Reed, S. Cohen, and Abraham's own private label. Abraham's in a story downtown. Downtown Cleveland.
Nova Southeastern. I mean, first class tournament, just well run. It was great from everything here at practice, hotel, uh, the experience we had here. So I just want to say thank you for that. Um, whenever the, the thing that sticks out to my mind is first kind of ran, ran into a buzzsaw tonight, just very impressive team. Uh, key was, I think we had cut it maybe to four in the second half, four or five. And we were getting good looks at the basket, probably scoring every other time, two out of every three times, but, but we just couldn't stop them. On the other end, they were getting good looks at the basket and they were knocking them down and, and shot you know, over 50% for the game. And you know, some of that was us missing assignments, but just a, a very good basketball team. Our emphasis tonight was to stop Porter, number 32, and you know we hold her into single single digits and then three other people for them for their play for their team step up with, with 20 points and near 20 points and then a lot near double figures so just many weapons coach Freeland does a great job with them they, they pass the basketball well they space you out well they read how you're guarding it well just a really good basketball team we ran into today yeah you know I thought I, I thought for the most part we, we were getting some some pretty good shots and then you know we hit some early and then I think we went pretty cold because if we shot 36 percent in the first, 37 percent in the first half, and we, we hit quite a few right there at the beginning, it had to be down in the 20s probably. I, I don't think anything different in the shots we got, and shot 53 percent in the second half as well too. I'll just go back again to the fact that whenever we made that little push in the second half, uh, we didn't have an answer for them on on the defensive end for us.